Okay, so in putting this presentation together, we kind of came up with three core items we wanted to talk about. This is kind of uh, picking up from where we had given our last presentation at the 2019 uh, PUG conference as well. So we'll give a little bit of background history. Um, and if you have any questions afterwards in terms of our uh, initial project or any other configuration items, feel free as well. But the overview, essentially, we're going to be talking about our experience as a whole over the past five years and a little broader as well in terms of uh, what it looked like a little before and after to, to see the big picture of how IUDs affected uh, lg &E and KU. And then we're going to talk about uh, the, our Louisville Gas and Electric Kentucky Utilities. Uh, so we'll talk about the movement to ESRI and the use of the utility network. And then we'll wrap up with uh, a couple of points on the corporate consolidation that Pat had kind of touched on earlier. So looking at our, our line of businesses that we have um, at LG&E, you have our, our electric and then we have our gas and then with Kentucky Utilities, uh, it's just solely electric. Um, but as a total combined as LKE, as some call us, uh, we have 89 designers. Um, that's kind of a mix of design techs and engineers uh, that are using uh, AUD. And we're covering those 79 counties, they're all in Kentucky. Um, there's 120 counties, so we're just a little over half of the counties that we touch um, in our service territories. Uh, for the gas design, we have a total of just the seven gas designers. Um, the map that you're seeing, it shows, I think, around eight, eight of the counties out of that 17 is the majority of our design work is done in. Um, the, the rest of the counties, we either store gas, um, we buy or sell um, at retail out of those counties. Um, the electric side, we have 27 designers for lg and &E, and that area is uh, the, the territory for the eight counties that, that we serve the electric in. The KU, you get a little more of a widespread across the state. Um, as you can see, kind of their, their main area is in Lexington. That's one of their, their corporate offices. Um, we stretch all the way down into the bottom eastern corners, all the way out in the western Kentucky. They cover the 75 counties, um, and the rest is mostly provided with uh, co-op electric companies. Um, we pulled these numbers just kind of give you a, a snapshot of the, the user base. The way we do our jobs, we have work orders that we create in our work management system, and you can create either a non-design work uh, order or you can create a design work order. And the numbers I have here on the graph are strictly design only because those are the ones that they end up um, getting pushed to AUD. So these are solely AUD-driven designs. Um, the very bottom of the the graph the is the gas designs um, and they kind of picked up a little bit more uh, around 2015 and 2017 the gas and even the electric on the lg &E side for our major projects was solely non-design work requests uh, we would draw them in aud or in autocad and marker station at that time. And we would just drop the materials manually in our, I think it was storms is what we we're using at that time for our, our work management that later got switched over to ARM. And 2017 was, uh, like I said, the first quarter we rolled it out. 2018, the work, the work orders that were designed kind of dropped um we a lot of the users were dealing with the bugs and the defects of rolling out the new system 
Um, once all that started getting reworked and fixed, you can see the numbers picked up quite substantially, um, even on the KU side. And I would say some of it is even attributed to retirements, um, kind of the, the user base acceptance that, that you talk about. Uh, we had newer people coming in that were able to kind of start off at the beginning with AUD, so they didn't really have the experience of using the, the other tools to fall back on. Um, let's, see. let's get back to Ryan. So I'll talk a little bit about the changes we've seen since 2017 in terms of configuration. Uh, we've had two uh, significant upgrades. Uh, first one was back in 2019, so uh, a little under two years after we had deployed it. We went from 7.1 to 7.3, and we had done that in retaining uh, AutoCAD Map 3D uh, 2017 and Vault 2017 as well. And at that point, we were on a licensed server system. Uh, it was easy to keep up with licenses, wasn't um, very difficult at all. And then uh, we had another upgrade, 2021. So we went from 7.3 to 8.2. And that, with that, uh, that was tied into our Esri project, which I'll talk more about here in just a little bit, uh, or our GIS project. So we had updated AutoCAD to Map 3D 2020 along with Vault and moved to the license, uh, from the license server to our, our individual licensing maintenance. So during that time as well, uh, we had some Citrix changes. Our configuration at LKE uh, is a virtual uh, interface for the users. So we have 12 different servers uh, that people launch our VDI session on for their interface on, on AUD. And there have been various updates to the Citrix system that it lives on top of uh, as well. So the LKE movement to Esri and the utility network, it affects a, uh, impacts AUD uh, or impacted AUD. And we've got a little project overview, uh, kind of how we're uh, utilizing the utility network as well. So the project overview, uh, so this, as with any GIS project, was a huge project, uh, multi-year. It was broken into three phases. The first phase was done in 2019, or started in 2019 and ended in 2020, and it encapsulated some of our subgroups of uh, generation and telecom uh, electric transmission. And then we went on to phase two, 2020 uh, to 2021. That's where our gas distribution came into play, and that's how or when AUD was affected uh, on our side. And then we also had a phase three, but due to uh, our corporate consolidation, that has been delayed until uh, more information comes out on all those processes and strategies. So that was our electric distribution, and that was our biggest uh, number of assets in the, in the company. So as I said, phase two was from January, or from 2021 to 20, uh, 2020 to 2021, and it, essentially affected 12 of our major systems uh, since the GIS really is integrated with a tremendous amount of our systems at LKE. But it impacted AUD and it required us to upgrade to make sure uh, we could utilize the utility network uh, and pull in our data from not only the utility network but also our old uh, small world system as well. So that's uh, one of the big things that uh, happened during the project, making sure that that interface worked well and played nicely between two systems from phase two to phase three. Um, and we transitioned over from the uh, FDO over to feature services on the Esri side. So now we're, um, we have the gas utility network that's incorporated in Esri. We're pulling that into AED along with the land base uh, that was dually maintained since electric and land uh, gas needed to have land base. So it was actually maintained between two of our systems, uh, but that also got pulled in from, from Esri into AUD. 
And we also have the, the core navigation, streets, subdivisions, um, gas facilities. We have that um, also playing with the Esri uh, feature services. So the use of utility network, uh, the biggest use from an end user perspective is we've got uh, kind of a pipeline domain, pressure traces, leak management. If there's any leaks that occur, um, the distribution operations gas side can go through and do a, a trace, pulling customer information that can quickly identify who all is affected by a leak in a certain area. And with our future use in terms of the utility network, uh, for AUD specifically, the playback tool uh, will come in, come into play uh, as we have more uh, consolidation with our parent company. Uh, and then on the Esri side, cathodic protect protection is also something that they're going to be utilizing uh, with the utility network. So the last thing we're wanting to talk about is the uh, PPL corporate IT strategy. So this is a huge initiative and multi-year impact on our company, the sub, uh, uh, sub companies under PPNL. So this is going to transform all of uh, Kentucky, Rhode Island, uh, Pennsylvania, the IT organizations, and essentially uh, deliver the business value through a product, um, not a project model going forward. It's going to be uh, centralized in terms of governance. Everybody's going to be on the same platforms and ensuring that we're covering the needs across the uh, corporate landscape. And uh, the strategy overview essentially is just a very deliberate forward thinking governance uh, to support the new product driven operating model and agile process with sprints um, even after this consolidation uh, ends. So these will be living products instead of just projects and uh, O&M enhancements. So that is our update. Do you guys have any questions? Uh, you mentioned that your productivity went up after retirements. It seems like you might have had challenges with people who've used to the old programs. Do you have any advice how to get people over and transition to AUD? Or is early retirement the only answer? Uh, we we implemented a lot of the, the SMEs that we called super users. Um, I believe almost every office location had at least one that people could fall back on, uh, whether it be training or just everyday questions, they run into problems. Um, even uh, Ryan's group and our admin support, they continually, uh, I guess, You'd almost call them road shows. Y'all, they they kept going back to those kind of rural areas where there's not a lot of designers at some of those places across the state, um, and supported them through training. Uh, so it's it does take a lot of work, um, and you'll still have those that are just set in their way. Um, so yeah, uh, I think the the biggest is just having the support there for them. Um, and and even getting the management on board above those those areas, um, so that they're they're pushing it as well. Uh, that's probably going to be your quickest way of of getting them to change is to have someone higher up tell them this is the way we're going forward. You know, as a company. Um, but yeah, that's about all I have for that. Um, you were talking about the utility network, right? And you said that you converted your generation and transmission facilities into the utility network. Is that what you meant? or Because I want to ask a question about that. So our involvement with the utility network and the ESRI project, so phase two in terms of AUD, we're uh, using the utility network for our gas distribution. So transmission also used it. Uh, we weren't involved in AUD. Um, in, in terms of AUD, mm -hmm. they aren't using the application, but it was mostly for our, our gas distribution side. So the core 
uh, utility network is there and we're pulling uh, facilities. And I think the biggest use we're gonna have is getting the playback tool to be able to re or write back into the GIS in terms of uh, saving efforts and duplicating efforts and having that quality assurance, kind of like what you had mentioned in your presentation as well. Because I know that's something that uh, I believe when the consolidation efforts are, are done, that's gonna be a big corporate across the, the playing field uh, cost savings. Thank you. And my follow-up question is, can I? Can we do that with uh, AUD for transmission? So the bigger PPL corporate project is to incorporate all that into the utility network. And uh, Sergey has been working with them on the playback or the whole UDH to how to pull them in and how to pull it back. So that's going out. A, the next level, which will then come back down to all the operating centers. So yes, it's a core capability that we will implement. Uh, I would add to that, our, our electric transmission is on PLS CAD, so it'll be interesting to see how that changes and going forward, so. For your overall strategic plan, are you combining the three different kind of business units? What are some of the, the core challenges you guys see? Do you have separate uh, standards for those different units? There's What type of consolidations you see are gonna be your biggest hurdles for that project? So you're asking the question in terms of our corporate consolidation across all three um, larger companies. Everybody agreeing on one standard. <laughs> I think that's where the governance comes into play. There'll, there'll be um, um, business leads and product owners uh, all working together, I think, to make sure that, that we're meeting the needs of all the, the different businesses or different uh, uh, companies. It's gonna be a challenge, I think, but well worth, well worth the effort.